Good morning. I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. It's Saturday Speaker Shootout. I've been looking forward to this all week, and I hope you have too. Probably not, because I don't have a ton of subscribers, which leads me to ask you to subscribe. I know it probably doesn't mean a lot to you, but it means a lot to me. If you want to try high-res music for free, and you live in the U.S. or Canada, I'll have a link to Amazon HD. Click on the link, scroll down at the bottom of the page, it'll, it'll say try HD. Otherwise, you, you, you're just trying like regular Amazon Music Unlimited. And it's kind of like Spotify or Apple Music. It won't be high res. So anyway, grab a cup of coffee. It's Speaker Saturday Shootout. Let's get it on. All right, we have five speakers up here. They're all less than $100. It's the less than $100 Saturday speaker shootout. I'm, I'm super excited. You, will, you, may, you may recognize someone that was actually playing in the sub $200 Saturday speaker shootout. And that's the Sony SSC S5. Why is he down here? Slumming it with the rest of us? Well, because he went on sale for $73. That's pretty incredible. Okay, so from your right, my left, to your left, my right, we have the Dayton, uh, let's see, what is he? He is the something something air, B52 air, B52 air, something like that. It's a Dayton audio, okay? It's got an AMT tweeter. All right, then we have the Numi BS5. We have the Mica MB42X, I think. Let me see. MB, I got it right, MB42X. The Polk T15 and then the Sony SSCS5. I'll challenge you to remember all these um, model codes. They're not easy. All right, we're getting right into it. So first, let's talk about build quality. Um, build quality um, from worst to best. Worst is the Dayton Audio. It's a $55 um, bookshelf speaker um, from Parts Express, okay? Uh, it's, the finish is, is poor. Um, the baffle is painted and it's not painted well. It's got a vinyl wrap. Um, some of the uh, cuts on the back aren't mating up properly. It's not built well. Okay, then we will go to kind of a tie between the Marca, Mica, what, RB, no, I keep forgetting this, MB42X. Okay, so the Mica and the Polk, um, probably similar. They're both built uh, in an acceptable, at an acceptable level. They're different though. So the Polk has like a fake wood grain, which is actually pretty good. And if it was like brown, it would look really cool. Um, so it's it's pretty good. This is kind of like a vinyl plasticky kind of computer speaker looking um, finish. Um, they're both built well. Um, they all have um, five-way binding posts except for the Dayton Audio, which just has clips, you know, the old style. The old style of clips on the back. And I'm saying clips, not clipsh. Somebody in the comments told me I was pronouncing clipsh wrong. Speaking of clipsh, I'm giving away a pair of clipsh R51M speakers. I will link that video in this uh, description. If you want to get entered, if you want a free pair of speakers, go watch the video. I'll give you all the details and instructions. I'm pretty, I'm pretty lenient on the instruction. So basically you have to subscribe. So just subscribe and then fill out the thing. Otherwise I can't, I don't have your name so I can't tell who won. Okay, so build quality. Build quality, um, next best build quality would be the Sony. Um, it's, it's a straightforward rectangular box speaker, but it's finished well. It's not trying to be wood grain. Um, it's got a vinyl wrap. Uh, it's got kind of a cool uh, baffle covering. 
it's straightforward, it's affordable, um, and it's simple, and it's good looking. They do it well. Uh, far and away, the build quality would go to the Numi BS5. And I'm going to see if I can show you. It's got um, a wood grain vinyl wrap that is ever so slightly browner than the front black baffle. Um, it's very nice. The back has 45 degree cuts, which are done really well. Inlaid ports. Um, it's just built really well. All right, let's talk about some specs and driver sizes. A uh, Polk T15 is a five and a quarter inch woofer with a 0.75 inch, three quarter inch soft dome tweeter. Numi BS5, five inch woofer with a one inch soft dome tweeter. Dayton Audio is the biggest woofer here. It's a six and a half inch, um, six and a half inch woofer and an AMT tweeter. So AMT is different technology. It's a ribbon tweeter. Um, it's not a dynamic driver, but we'll get into the sound later. Okay. Uh, mica four inch, um, woofer three quarter inch tweeter. Yep. And then, uh, Sony, uh, five, 5.12 inch 0.12 is very important because that 200 seven inch makes a difference. 5.12 inch, uh, Woofer, one inch or 0.98 inch. We're just south of, of a one inch soft dome tweeter and then a three quarter inch super tweeter, okay? All right, um, the sensitivities on these are all fairly similar. The Numi is 85. Um, the Numi and the Sony are six ohms. Uh, the rest are um, eight ohms. Yes, eight ohms. Actually, the mic is 85 dB. So the mic is actually the. It's not really hard to drive because it's 8 ohms. They're similar sen uh, sensitivities. Okay. That's great. Who really cares about how they look? Some people do. I don't particularly care. Rear port, rear port, front port, front port, no port. Okay? Rear port, rear port, front port, no port. Are we ready to talk about bass? Yeah, let's talk about bass. All right, when you're in a budget speaker, and I've said it before, budget speakers, and this is definitely would fit into the category of budget speakers, sometimes do one, sometimes two things well. Rarely does a sub $100 speaker or even a sub $200 speaker do three things well from a sound perspective. They can get the build right, but it doesn't always sound correctly. So, um, pleasantly surprised with a few of these. So, let's talk about the what I would call the weakest bass. Unfortunately, it's going, going to go uh, to the mica. It makes sense, too. It's physics. It's science. Um, it's a four inch, it's a four inch uh, woofer. And I think I got the specs down here. It's, it is specced at 60,000 uh, or 60 Hertz up to 20,000 kilohertz. Okay. Can you affect the bass? Sure. You can move it closer to a wall with the rear port. Um, it's okay. It's okay. It needs a sub. The problem with needing a sub though in this price category is usually if you're buying speakers of this price, then you're probably not, either you can't afford or you don't maybe want to buy a sub, if that makes sense. So I'd rather have speakers be somewhat uh, full on the low end in this price range simply because people probably aren't going to be buying a sub initially. Okay. So let's talk about uh, the next best bass. Okay, so if the mica is the worst, then it would probably be a tie for the Polk and the Dayton Audio. Now
I apologize for that unfortunate interruption. That was my daughter, and she wanted Lucky Charms. So we were talking about bass. I believe we were talking about bass. I think bass on the Polk and the Dayton audio would tie. Um, even though the Dayton audio is only spec to 70 hertz, when you hang it on a wall, and it's meant to be hung on the wall because it's got a keyhole, this one's also meant to be on a wall. Um, they have a similar bass response. This one's rated down to, let's see, the Polk is rated down to 60. Um, the Dayton's uh, rated down to 70. But I, I kind of felt, I heard the same. I heard the same bass response. Okay, let's step it up a bit. Bass response, um, then we come to the, the Sony. The reason why, these are really probably the same. It would be a tie. The only reason why the Numi wins in bass is because it's front ported and it's not as dependent on placement as the Sony. The Sony has very good bass. It's tight and it's fast for a speaker in this price category. Um, the Numi may not have quite as fast of bass, but overall the bass is gonna be a bit better than the Sony simply because it has more placement freedom. Uh, however, the Sony does have a pretty wide sweet spot, and sweet spot to me it defines as where the music sounds balanced from a bass, mid-range, and treble standpoint. I found that this speaker sounded very balanced between uh, six inches out to almost 16 inches. So it had a much wider sweet spot than some other speakers, even, even double this price. So very good bass on both of these. Uh, the nudge goes to the Numi simply because of the front porting. Okay. Let's talk about mid-range. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to say the worst mid-range on here is the Polk. And I continue to... I continue to poo on the Polks. Last week I pooed all over the S15. It's just veiled. It just sounds like uh, the speaker is underneath a, a thin blanket or a sheet. It's just not clear. It's not detailed. And in, a, in, a, in speakers of this price range, I don't. My expectation is that the sound is balanced and it's clear, and that's really it. And I don't, I think at this price range, that's about as much as you can ask. The sound is not clear. The completely crazy thing is on Amazon, this has 4,700 reviews and they're good reviews. This is, I think, the third best selling bookshelf speaker on Amazon. Okay. And if you just buy it, if you put it up for surrounds, I can see it being good and satisfying that use case scenario. It does have a keyhole on the back, so you can hang it on the wall. It probably gets such good reviews for surrounds, okay? It's not as good as, as the rest of these. Um, the mid-range then is going to be kind of a toss-up between the Micah and the Dayton Audio. And they both have similar mid-ranges because they both have a, have a over-dependence on the tweeter for the mid-range. Um, this has a, a 0.75 inch uh, tweeter. This one has that AMT. So... They both have a tendency to be um, shouty, okay? The Mica, I had it by the TV. So how I how I review speakers is first I, I put them up in my in my main listening room, which happens to be my office. I put them on a set of stands, I listen to them, and then I move them forward or for forward or aft, uh, closer to the wall or farther away from the wall, 
until I get what I feel like is a balanced sound signature. And this is all done without a subwoofer. I listen to it for a while. I, I mess with toe in to see, you know, kind of where I feel the sweet spot is um, for me. But then it also tells me when the speaker is the most bright, when the speaker is the most cohesive and balanced and all that good stuff. Okay. And then the last thing I do is I put them up on my TV stand and I run them for a few days just with the kids watching TV because I don't normally watch a lot of TV in the living room because, well, it's got cartoons on it 24-7 on a loop. And every once in a while I'll throw on some music. So the micas have been living there for the last few days. The micas are shouty with the vocals. It's metallic okay metallic the Dayton can also sound that way but the one thing that Dayton has going for it is like female vocals in the upper mid-range the upper mid-range in general comes through crystal clear it's it and it's not on every track but certain tracks the Dayton is just whoa wow that sounds incredible Okay, so mid-range is uh, shouty and metallic. Mid-range can be shouty and metallic, um, but female vocals and upper mid-range can sound incredible. Mid-range uh, on these two, they're very good at this price range. They're very good, I would say, all the way into up to 200 up to two hundred dollars. These speakers, these if you if these speakers and this one was in the one hundred to two hundred dollar that sub two hundred dollar speaker shoot up. This, mm, they could they could they could play, they could play, and they could do well. Okay, mid range on this um, is uh, a little bit smoother than on the Sony, and it kind of makes sense. There's two tweeters, so you're gonna have a little bit of an emphasis on the upper upper frequencies, but absolutely clear. Multiple genres of music sound great. Rock, jazz, um, classical. I don't listen to a lot of classical, but it still sounds good. I do, if you consider Metallica s and 2 with the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra as being classical, and I guess it is. It just has the greatest rock band of all time playing along with them. Anyway, excuse me. Um, I would say the Sony has a ever so slightly cleaner mid-range, but it doesn't mean it sounds better. It's just cleaner. Okay, the Numi has a smoother mid-range, more buttery mid-range okay the polk is veiled it's balanced but it's veiled the polk as a whole this speaker is balanced it just seems like someone threw something over the top of it okay let's talk about treble so normally speakers below 100 can actually do treble pretty well um, because it comes down to a woofer and and um, enclosure limitations other than a tweeter limitation because tweeter you pop it right there interestingly enough tweeter does not need its own enclosure so the tweeter is already an enclosure just uh, in and of itself um, the woofer is the thing that needs an enclosure to tune it properly so in theory you could take a tweeter and just put it on a literally a piece of wood that's angled and you could get similar response now you're gonna have reflections and stuff off the baffle and that's gonna play into it but the point is tweeters aren't as hard to tune as woofers are okay so I digress um, The, the high end on the T15 is probably um, the worst simply because it's covered up and not as clear. The mica is ultra clear, but too clear. 
and uh, if you tow out, it gets better. It gets better. I forgot to mention imaging. Imaging is best on this one. Uh, imaging's actually good on all of these except for the Polk. Soundstage um, goes to the Numi. No, uh, Sony Numi for soundstage. That's how wide, how high, how deep music sounds. Okay, getting back to treble. Treble is the worst on the Polk simply because it sounds veiled and it's not detailed. Mica is the second worst simply because it's too detailed. It's it's not balanced with the rest of of the sound. Okay. Uh, third best treble is the Dayton. Interestingly enough, and I think it's has everything to do with this AMT tweeter. If I wish they had a better crossover or a more expensive version of this with an AMT tweeter because I think there's a lot of um, potential in this speaker. A lot of potential. Um, get a little bit better enclosure, port it, put a decent crossover in it, and maybe put a little bit better woofer in it. You got a winner. I mean, this tweeter is good. Um, it's airy. Um, besides the Sony, it probably has the most clarity and detail out of any of these. Um, and because of that, it has fairly decent imaging. Okay. So, um, the Numi is the second best top end. It's got a very good, Oh, I just poked it. I don't like it when I do that. It's got a very good waveguide. It's got a very large soft dome tweeter for this size, okay? So one inch, one inch, and another three quarter inch AMT three quarter inch. So there's a, there's a theme here. My daughter's coming out. I'm gonna have another interruption. I apologize uh, for the child interruption again couldn't find the lucky charms, which can be a very big deal to a child. So we were talking about treble. Specifically, the treble on the mica and the Sony, which in this class is class leading. Okay, the wind would go to the Sony um, and it has everything to do, oh, I was talking about driver size. So there's a theme, uh, 0.75 inch, um, is not as good as a one inch and that kind of makes sense obviously it's how drivers are implemented that's obvious however at a sub $100 level for speakers I think the one inch is always going to beat the 0.75 inch unless there is a ton of engineering going on and at this price range I think it precludes a ton of engineering going on okay so, one inch, one inch AMT. Um, this is the best, and I think it's because it has that additional uh, three quarter inch. Um, and the way it has been implemented has, is in such a way that it remains balanced and not overtly bright. It remains balanced and it leans, and it doesn't lean, it leans right into being exciting. It's an exciting speaker, okay? The Numi is more well-behaved. It is neither bright nor is it warm. It is a Goldilocks speaker. I have another review on the Numi if you'd like to watch it. It is right in the middle, right in the middle, okay? So, treble, um, tied for the worst, and this is just in this category, okay? I'm not trying not to poop on any of these speakers. This is the worst, um, third best, with just an absolute ton of, of potential if they just throw a, a decent crossover in here and make the enclosure a little bit better. This could be a, this could be really good. It could, that could also push the price up to a hundred. The thing about it is, I mean, okay, $55, make it $75, make it $80 and just make it good. Anyway, anyway, um, knew me, Sony. And depending upon your taste, it, you could switch it out. Okay. So, what are my final thoughts and the awards? Okay. 
final thoughts are, I have no idea how this has such high ratings on Amazon, other than it being a Polk. And people just know that name and they buy it. Um, I could see this being decent on a desk setup uh, with proper toe-in and directionality, angle, proper angling, and a subwoofer. I could see that. This is just too unbalanced. It's too bright. Um, and I just think they can't get over uh, the limitations of the four inch. This has a heck of a crossover built into it and there's engineering. Someone spent some time on this thing, um, but it's, it's just too unbalanced for me. And it can't, it can't stand alone without a subwoofer, in my opinion, or this, 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 and even this to a lesser extent can stand alone without a subwoofer. Okay. So probably the worst out of the, than this one, then the Dayton. The Dayton has, again, a lot going for it. And on certain songs, it sounds great. Placement is very important on that. It needs to go on a wall and needs to be straight out. Um, otherwise, it gets just too bright and too intense on the treble. It needs to be against the wall too to get some room gain to fill out that bass. However, it's well balanced and it's clear. And that's, at this price range, is, is about all one can ask, okay? The win is gonna be a tie. And the reason it's a tie is because it's going to be what you particularly like. Um, it's obvious that the Sony was gonna do really well in this category because it did really well in the sub 200 category at $120. At $73, it's jaw droppingly incredible. And I'm not just saying it's a good $73 speaker. I'm saying this is a good speaker, period. Um, I I turned a few folks uh, onto this and they purchased this. Three people purchased this yesterday through my links and thank you very much. Um, and I don't know if it's available on Amazon. I think it's sold out, okay? I'm, I'm gonna link it though. Um, and hopefully maybe they've got more back in stock. But for $73, man, just buy it. I'm thinking about buying another set. I'm actually thinking about buying the towers because the towers are $99 a piece, $200 for a set of towers. The thing about the towers is they don't go a he whole heck of a lot lower than these. It's just going to be louder and it might be ever so, it, it might be a little bit more efficient because when you add more drivers and it depends on the wire. Anyway, you can add efficiency by adding more drivers. So knockout. It's a knockout. The biggest surprise for me was the new me. I wasn't expecting much, especially when I heard the mica. And I think these are made by the same company. If you look at their packaging, the fonts and the layout is very similar. And I think what this is, is a Chinese manufacturer that probably private labels um, speakers for a wide variety of companies and has maybe borrowed some of the technology utilized by different companies and implemented it into their own speaker. And good, because it is good. Um, if the Sony didn't exist, this would be far and away my recommendation for less than $100. It's good. It's balanced. It is not too bright, not too warm, right in the middle. It sounds so much bigger than it is. I had these next to the TV for a few days and I was astounded how easily they filled the room. And it's a big room. It's, I think they're 20 foot ceilings. They seem like they're higher when I have to change out a fire detector, but I think they're 20 foot. Um, it's balanced across different volume levels. Um, it's a very, very good speaker. This is an incredibly exciting speaker. Um, if I had to compare these two to a more expensive um, speaker that is very well regarded, I would compare this one to the ELAC debut reference. I would compare this one to the Clips RP600M. And I would argue that this $73 Sony does better than other Klipsch that are twice as expensive and sounds more similar to the RP600M than 
other clips speakers do. I'll debate you on that one all day long. It's good. It's great. Who's the winner? Well, we, the consumer, are winners because these exist. And even this one exists. I mean, the thing about this one, though, the, the worst thing this one has going for it is this one and this one. Because at $55, now you can find coupons for Parts Express, and you probably get it for maybe $45. Um, but you're still gonna have to pay shipping unless you had like five dollars worth of speaker wire because they get free shipping over fifty dollars anyway the worst thing this has going for it is this because let's say this is twenty dollars more okay it's actually less than twenty let's say it's seventeen dollars more buy this one buy 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 this one this is the Sony is twice the speaker as the Dayton audio if not more so okay um, pleasantly surprised with this category absolutely kind of blown away about how much speaker you can get for your money and if you get the right speaker it can be very well balanced okay very well balanced very enjoyable without the need to utilize a subwoofer if you do use a sub it's obviously going to make a difference okay um surprisingly these don't need a lot of low end i crossed these over when i had them next to the uh, tv at 80 hertz normally people would think a speaker of, of this caliber would need to be crossed over much higher. 80 was just fine. Actually, I crossed this one over at 70 just to see how it sounded. It sounded great. So, let's give the awards. All right. So the monkey is the lowest tier. Monkey goes to the mica. There's a lot going on in this speaker. There's a lot of good engineering and a lot of good intent in this speaker. I just don't think they quite get it right on this speaker. There's a big crossover in here. Uh, and if they could use, if they had a five inch or five and a half inch driver, I think this thing could be a knockout. Uh, I just don't think it's there yet. Okay. Um, Little Skull. Little Skull is going to the Dayton Audio. Um, the reason why is it, it can be remarkable. And with that AMT tweeter, it's just got a lot going for it. Um, if you get past the build quality, if you get, if they improve the build quality, if they improve the crossover, um, this could be an incredible speaker. If they, if they ported the enclosure and got the right, a right port length in there, this thing could be a knockout. Um, an absolute knockout and if you're a DIYer or you want to have some fun you could buy this and start you know messing around with it drill a hole and put a port in and mess with the different port lengths and see how see what you can get out of it um, it just needs more work it needs uh, a little bit more engineering um, but for what it is it's it's pretty it's pretty good okay hmm this is a tough one man these are both so good Okay. Numi is my Zen speaker. It's right in the middle. It's a good speaker. It's good overall. Sony is the devil horn skull because it's a rock and roll speaker, but it's just not a rock and roll speaker. It's so much more. Okay, it's so much more. It can do so many genres right. It sounds so good. It images so well. It even sound stages pretty good. Um, images better than this one. So incredible and much more difficult comparison than the sub 200 uh, was. This was a lot of fun for me. Um, all of these that are still available on Amazon will be linked in the description. If you want to buy the Dayton Audio, don't buy it from Amazon. You'll pay more. Go to, directly to Parts Express. Uh, search for a Parts Express discount code. You should find one very easily and buy that there. Where do these live? This one lives in the garage. Uh, this one lives on a desk. This one lives as a surround. 
Uh, this one lives um, as a two channel setup or front channels for a home theater or even surrounds for a home theater. This one lives as a two channel setup next to um, a record player, vinyl turntable, or it lives as, a, as some front speakers. These are extraordinary, extraordinary values. The worst thing this one has going for it is a $73 Sony because this is 17 more dollars and I know that $17 doesn't sound like a lot. 17 more than the Sony and the Sony could be considered better. You're splitting hairs though. They're different sound signatures, okay? This is a more neutral sound signature. This is a more exciting sound signature. This was fun. This was a blast. Um, everything's going to be linked in the description. If you want to try high res streaming for free, click on the link. If you're in the US and A or the Canada, you can use those links. Um, there's a Patreon link if you want to give to the channel. I have had more people using the links. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> that's going to keep the channel going. Okay, that's going to keep bringing more stuff in found a deal on Q Acoustics. They're coming in. I'm getting them today. Q Acoustics 3020. Not the latest one, but it's the 3020 still available. We're going to give that a listen. We're going to give that a review. Okay. So if you have requests for, we're going to, the next tier is sub $300 speakers US. Okay. So if you have a recommendation or you want me to review a specific speaker and it falls under that $300 a retail price or even if it's on sale right now for $300 for uh, you know the holidays let me know in the comments and I will see what I can do to get a hold of him but with that I am Randy I am a cheap audio man and thank you so much for joining me on the Saturday speaker shootout